Welcome to the fifth season of The Coaching Cast, your working from home club. We're here to remind you that you're not alone and that we are in this together, all striving to make sense of today's working world. Regardless of where you're working right now or whatever you do as a career, we've got something for you here at The Coaching Cast. I'm Lisa, founder of Grip Corporate Coaching, personal performance coach, leader, and chief eye roller when it comes to all nonsensical corporate mumbo jumbo, which suffocates rather than advocate. I'm Susie, coach and trainer at Future You Business Coaching, currently taking on my hardest coaching assignment to date, parenting a two-year-old, who doesn't take too kindly to being questioned. In this podcast, we explore all the things impacting you, our CBBs at work right now, presenting different topics each episode, which we will discuss with some special guests along the way, sharing ideas, hints and tips for you to take away and try for yourself, as well as having a few laughs along the way. We hope you enjoy listening. In today's episode, we're discussing work-life balance, something we all strive for, but often find challenging to achieve. Why are we so bad at it? Because surely it's only a good thing for us to strive for. We discuss alongside our top tips. So stay with us and enjoy. So before we get into this week's episode, Lisa, or shall I call you Judith, how have you been? (laughs) So for anyone who's unsure about the Judith reference, it's a reference to Judith Chalmers. So I don't actually know if anyone's listening who's old enough to know who Judith Chalmers is, but she was a lady who did the travel programme Wish You Were Here on ITV, which used to come on, I think, from memory quite early evening. So she used to travel a lot. And obviously that's the reference to me because, yes, I have been on travels again. So if you listened to last week's episode, uh, you would have heard I was in Kent. I was actually recording the podcast from my dad's office near Canterbury last week. <laughs> Today I'm back in the Cotswolds. So I'm back in my actual house. Um so yes, but no, my week was really good. Thank you. So I went home because yeah, I hadn't caught up with any of the family or friends since um, Christmas. That was the last time. And I've been away out of the country for five months. So I thought I'd go home and it was absolutely glorious. The weather was amazing. My mum lives um, near the sea. So it was like, you know, like being on the South coast as well, but like being in Spain, I was describing oh, it. It was, it was lovely. lovely. Um so yeah, I had a good week. I spent um, a lot of time with my sisters and my mom. I saw my dad, I saw some friends. It was great. Um, and so on Friday, I went to a yoga retreat. I did post some photos actually on the coaching cast Instagram page because I thought it was such a beautiful day on Friday. And I was in this lady's house and she had like the quintessential like English country garden. It was stunning. And I thought, well, this will cheer up our CBBs if anyone needs to pick me up on a Friday morning. And it was beautiful, but it was this yoga retreat. And this woman who owned the house, ran the retreat was quite an interesting character. Now I didn't stay overnight. My youngest sister who I went with and her friend, they did because it was a pre-arranged uh, occasion and actually they kindly invited me quite last minute to join them if I wanted to so I did but I didn't stay over and they stayed overnight and got to know the owner even better and I got this message from my little sister now my little sister I mean she's adorable she's five years younger than me so she's little in my eyes but she's still in her 30s um, and <laughs> she's she, a fully fledged adult <laughs> a fully fledged adult but she is quite innocent in quite a sweet way and um, we are very different um <laughs> that's all I'm saying um and she'd had this conversation with this lady and this lady had been quite an open character she was lovely actually um but she proceeded to share with my sister and her friend that she was polyamorous now Susie do you know what polyamorous means no <laughs> so neither did my sister <laughs> I love Should I? well as far as I know, maybe I should, I'm going to Google this like live on this podcast recording because I want to make sure now that I understand what the official term is for polyamorous. Um, brilliant that you don't know what it is either. Um, so my little sister didn't either and neither did her friend. Um, so but, did she use this exact word? Yes. Yeah. Because it is an right. exact term. Right. So this is the, I've put it into Google. This is what Google's come out with. 
polyamorous is characterized by or involved in the practice of engaging in multiple romantic and typically sexual relationships with the consent of all the people involved. So my little sister said, oh, so essentially it's swinging, which is not actually technically true. I think the woman did probably put her in her place, but that's not actually true. It's not swinging. Swinging is where you go to a party with your partner and you swap partners. Polyamorous is that you are engaging in multiple relationships at any given time. And that's totally fine because everyone who's involved is well aware of it. But yes, that conversation came up at this said retreat it was a brilliant place but as you can see very open and you know love is love and everyone okay. loves one yeah, another fair enough but that did crack me up my little sister messaging me going do you know what polyamorous means and I was like yes I do actually not now just so everyone's aware on this podcast I don't know it because I've been involved myself it's just I've been made aware of this term historically by through other people who have got you who apparently turned out to be poly- polyamorous but it was never something I knew about I'm too lazy. I couldn't be in a polyamorous relationship. One oh God. is quite enough for me. Thank yeah, you very much. Neither could I. No, like too, too many. Yeah, too much complication there. My well, I just have the capacity. Surely, as the term goes, <laughs> too many cooks spoil a broth. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, for exactly. anyone out there, for anyone out there who is in a healthy polyamorous set of relationships, excellent. Good for you. Great if you can do it. I think. But yeah, for me personally, I'm too lazy. It sounds too complicated. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought that was quite funny. So my little sister learned something new this week. Um, what was her reaction when you told her that? Well, I don't think I told her that. I think the lady explained to her what it meant. Ah, oh, sorry. Very, I wish I'd been a fly on the wall because Got I know you. what my little sister is like. And I think her eyes would have just popped. I bet she did an absolute face of like... <gasps> I can imagine she wasn't particularly subtle. So I wish I had been there because I think it would have been (laughs) hilarious. And I bet her and her mate didn't really know what to do with themselves. I know what I would have done because any kind of awkward situation I find myself in, I make more awkward by just, (laughs) I don't know. I would have been like, good for you. You You know, I know I would have done something like that. Maybe even I probably would have asked inappropriate questions. Just that doesn't sound like you. No, quite. <laughs> I, in my like natural state of wanting to sound curious and interested, I just know I would have gone too far. But then I'm not entirely sure that there is such a thing with this particular individual as being too far. She was very open and relaxed, but there is probably a line. There's probably a boundary there somewhere. <laughs> I would have definitely have crossed it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was part of my trip home to, to Kent, which was fab. Um yeah, really nice. I had a lovely time. How about you? What have you been up to since we last uh, encountered one another on this podcast? Well, there's been less Costa del Sol vibes up here in Cheshire, I would say. Costa del Cheshire. It's not been, it's been all right weather-wise. Like, it was warm on Friday, but that was it. Like, literally, um, it was warm until about 6pm and then the cloud came and the sun just went and that was it. It was like summer was gone. It was over, like, oh. end of um we had a barbecue like late afternoon thankfully because like I said by about six it, it had gone we we're like this is it the barbecue's done we're finished back inside so um yeah that was like a bit annoying that we didn't have quite the same sunny vibes up here in the north as well, down on the I'm south sorry coast. but the south does I know, I know especially especially where I'm from so apparently my best mate recently told us my best mate Zara that Folkestone gets more sunshine than anywhere else in the UK. And it's something to do with where it's located. (sighs) Now, I've never really particularly noticed a heavier, like a heavier, that's not what I meant, a larger amount, a heavier amount of sun. That's not a thing. (laughs) Sun is not heavy. I was going with, I I got stuck with the rain conversation that you just said. I was thinking of rainfall, heavy sunshine. (laughs) No, a larger amount of sunshine. I don't think I particularly noticed, but high is always, I think, personally, slightly warmer than folks. Mm. It's just around the corner, um, which is where my mum lives. It was like, I mean, I kept calling it Costa del Sango when I was there, because that's a little bit. Oh, well, yeah, it was not like that up here. Um, so, yeah, I actually was like, posted something on my personal Instagram because it was making me laugh because everyone I was speaking to was like, oh my God, can you believe we've got one day of summer? And then that's it. And I was like, I know. And then it's like raining tomorrow. Like the next, like literally one day. That's it. I had a hoodie back on on Saturday. I was like, oh. it's done. we're done. Hopefully not for the foreseeable. I hope it's going to come back out again. But God, it's depressing when it's just like, you get one like quick snapshot of warm, sunny weather and then it's, it's gone. It's cloudy today. 
Oh, right. I was about to say, is it the wrong time to say it's really sunny here? Uh, <laughs> I'm in Oxfordshire now and it's still sunny. This is still south. I need Apparently to get... it's going to be the hottest day of the year and I'm heading off to London in a minute. So uh, well, Judith strikes again. Judith, I need yep. to get... I need London to get my, Ju- my Judith on, I think. I know. Come on. What are you there doing? we go. There we go. Anyway, but um, yeah, had a bit of a crazy week, apart from the, obviously, the sunshine issues. Um, so a couple of things quite hilarious happened. Actually, yeah, there's like three things that were quite funny. One was, so if anyone watches this podcast on YouTube oh. or follows us on social media, whether that's LinkedIn or Instagram, we normally post, um, a little video of us doing the podcast, like talking, you can watch it, etc. Like an extract from the, like the episode. Extra. So you get like a taster. You can you yeah. can watch it and go, do I really want to watch the whole <laughs> yeah. thing? Most people probably listen go, to this drill. No, the- <laughs> no I've, 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 I've got the best bits from the clip it and I don't fancy the whole <laughs> the whole episode. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may have noticed we didn't have a video clip of it last week because, as we mentioned, we were talking about goal setting and I was in charge of recording that episode because Lisa was in Kent and she wasn't quite sure about her Wi-Fi bandwidth, which is no. a shipping go. Um, <laughs> and so one of my goals was to learn to record and download this episode on Zoom of which I hugely failed in doing that. <laughs> so I didn't achieve that goal. So I'll be honest, I'll own it. Because when we were doing our edits, like our post-record stuff, realised that throughout the whole episode, I'd set the setting on Zoom so that it was only recording Lisa's face for the entire time. The whole 53-minute episode is just Lisa's face. There's none of me for some reason. We don't really know why that is still. But anyway, I managed to absolutely balls this up. So we couldn't make a clip it because otherwise it would have just been Lisa's face for the entire clip it, but with my like talking over voice. It, yeah. Been so weird. yeah. I mean it is weird anyway. So I'd probably recommend that no one watches last week's episode <laughs> and everyone just if you already or if you already have, I apologize. But if if you haven't already watched episode four, it was episode four, wasn't it? Yeah. Don't just listen to it. Maybe just listen to it on your podcast app, either Spotify or Apple or Google. Whatever podcast app you use, it's available on all of them. But maybe listen to it, don't watch it, because you'll just see Lisa's face for the entire episode yeah I mean I don't make any effort I don't make any effort normally but I made even less effort last week so I look even worse than normal and it's a real close-up version because it fills the whole screen (laughs) oh god good job it's slightly pixelated because we've got poor quality on the record because it makes it look slightly airbrushed (laughs) otherwise I look terrible so pro on this one I mean five seasons in five seasons in we do we haven't got, I still haven't got a clue what we're doing. Brilliant. So, yeah, that happened last week. So that was a bit of a revelation. I mean, even Dave, our producer, couldn't, couldn't save that, couldn't bring that back. Bless him. Um, so, yeah, I must have been like, what are these two amateurs been doing for the last couple of hours? Um, so that happens. A few tech issues there. My dog escaped oh. out of my house. Yeah. So um, he's fine. But... Um, I was so confused. So basically, I was in the kitchen. It's the kitchen at the back of my house, making a cup of tea. Um, my husband had gone out with my little boy, shut the front door. The dog was in the house because I saw them go, dog in the hallway. It's like, fine. Next minute, I just hear my dog barking outside. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, what? The dog was in the house. Like, I've just seen him. How has he got outside the front door shut? My husband had come back in, opened the front door. And for some reason, and he never does this, my dog just pelted out the front door. So there was a dog walking past and just went mental at this door. I was like, oh, oh my, my God. God. So it was like, it was like a scene. What is that film where the dogs are like in a tuffle and there's like, is it, oh, is it 101 Dalmatians? I can't remember. Anyway, it was like- It's, the, it's the only film about dogs I really know. So I had to get him inside. Everyone was fine. Dogs were fine. We were just being like, like overly, like God. in your face, like, "Oi, walking past my house! Don't walk past my house!" <laughs> oh God, that's so embarrassing. Then I was so confused because I was just like, "How have you got out? You were here just a second ago." I was like, "So I come running out like a fishwife, like, why is the dog out? What's the dog doing out? He was in the house!" Like, I was just like, "Oh, literally, like, like a fishwife." <laughs> I love that term. Like a fish one, like shooting your mouth off in yeah. the street. I was just like, "This dog's out. What's the dog doing out? How's he out? He was in here before. <laughs> Get in the house. Yeah. 
like a scene from the oh, um, God. so yeah that was quite stressful and then um to end on my week as well so this didn't actually involve me it involved my husband but we had another poo in the bath incident this week so I was actually working um so I was on a call and um my husband was doing bath and bedtime my little boy and he came down and he was like well it's gonna happen again at some point and I was like what and basically my little boy had done a poo in the bath and we if you've listened to season one this features in season one so it's been a few seasons we've yeah, had seasons no poo in the bath like that's fine but then hilarious again another hilarious conversation about how he sorted the situation out um of which I went for a spatula last time like when I was in charge of sorting the situation out he didn't he went with rolled up loo roll and that didn't work out very well for him amateur amateur Uh, everyone knows that stuff's designed to disintegrate with it hits water anyway we won't go into any more detail but um Steve literally had to fish it out with his bare hand essentially basically yeah that's hilarious so we've had um <laughs> quite an eventful week in this household <laughs> amazing <laughs> but anyway shall we crack on with today's episode we're gonna be talking about work-life balance so yeah, I mean it's a tenuous link you know Steve picking up kids poo out the bath with the bare hand and now we're talking about work-life balance but actually I think that is a good background context absolutely life is always going on and we're always having to juggle shit i recently saw a post on my instagram feed which said stop wearing the i work long hours i travel a lot i have no time for family or myself as a badge of honor Let's fix work-life balance at all companies so that we have a mentally fit and more productive future generation. It really stopped me in my scrolling tracks and got me thinking, why do we put so much value on these things over prioritizing our own mental well-being, energy and relationships outside of work? This is further reinforced by the fact that one in three of us find maintaining a work-life balance the most stressful aspect of work, according to a recent survey by Just Eat for Business, which is actually pretty ironic. So, Lisa, how may our CBBs know if their work-life balance is a bit off kilter? Well, God, I think... We all know our work-life balance is off kilter, usually too late, don't we? Like after Mm. the the, event. Yeah, after the event. Like, I think for me personally, it's often just suddenly hit me in the face. And it's when I've realised, God, I'm exhausted. I haven't stopped. It used to be when I commuted, when I acknowledged that I actually hadn't spent any real time at my own house. And that's when I'd be like, oh, my God, like, I need to stop a moment. I need to slow down. I need to create some space to actually have some time at home and even time to do the mundane things because it was when I was running at a million miles an hour, not feeling as though I'd been at home, like, not being on top of things like just basic stuff like my washing and getting really like frustrated with that situation and thinking when have I got time to even like wash my hair which I've got thick hair it takes a long time but my point being you know I just wasn't prioritizing things that actually were going to look after me and that were about looking after me so I think actually what I tend to say about work-life balance is I think it's off kilter when you cannot think of the last time that you did something that was just for you and that was about looking after you. It was always about like doing something for somebody else, whether that's work related, children related. I know I don't have children, but I put that into that category or even friends and family, because I remember one particular year where I just, because I'm a yes woman and I love being involved in everything and I have a serious fear of missing out 
I just say yes to everything. And there was one year when I'd just done that. And I think it was like six consecutive weekends in a row where I was away or socialising, which I know for generally people who are listening, they're like, well, that still sounds like the same thing now, Lisa, because you're always away. <laughs> um, but I'm actually enjoying this and it's all about me. So <laughs> it's, it's different. Um, but I remember that. And then I was working Monday to Friday as well. And that would have involved travelling. And I was just absolutely buggered. I just remember being so tired and yeah like fried like my brain was frazzled I don't really know how I did it now COVID made me realize I mean I think it did for many of us that I did so much and was on the go all the time yeah and everything was so fast and I actually did struggle with COVID to begin with because it made me stop and I didn't actually know what to do with myself I found suddenly having so much time And being at home all the time, like quite suffocating and quite scary. But then I went the other way. And then when things started to reopen at all the various points that it did, I couldn't go out. I didn't, it's not that I couldn't go out, but I found going out actually quite, I I was found that quite scary in itself. And I was like, oh, but I quite like being at home. I kind of got used to the security of home. It's really weird. I think I've gone around and around on all of these things so many times. Yeah. I remember, I think I was working with you that summer where you were yes. just like doing loads of cool stuff every weekend. I was going away a lot. I kept going abroad yeah. as well. Like I wouldn't dream of doing that now, like working like that and then just skipping across the continent for like two nights <laughs> and then coming back. I'm like, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, I think I was like, I think I was pregnant. I think it was that summer where yeah. I was pregnant and we were working together and you were, um, yeah, doing some really cool stuff. But I remember like, saying like meeting you once at a hotel in like Birmingham because we used to meet there because it's halfway and we were like chatting and I was just like I can't be- like how are you maintaining this like this is like yeah fair play to you but again I was kind of like advocating it by saying like yeah fair play to you like you're doing all these amazing things whereas actually I probably should have been like oh my god how are you like are you okay <laughs> yeah I know it's funny isn't it but that is generally it's interesting about this comment of wearing it as a badge of honor I don't think I did wear it as a badge of honour. I I was really pleased with what I was doing and I was enjoying everything. So there was an element of me thinking, don't be a martyr about it, because actually you, it is within your control. You could just say no to things. Um, and if you're enjoying it, why does it matter? But I do think that external reaction, there is an element of validation of like, well done. <laughs> yeah. Which... Um, not that I would expect you to have critiqued it anyway, but it's interesting that you've reflected on it and gone, I I could have said, are you okay? But I mean, I probably would have just gone, yeah, I'm fine. And to be honest, I was fine. Yeah, I was fine. That's the thing. I was fine. I was knackered, but it was a kind of, I'm pleased about, you know, I'm pleased to be that tired, but actually the reality probably wasn't quite true. By the end of that summer, I think I was like, she was on my legs I know my husband was like we're never having a summer like that ever again please (laughs) and I was like yeah sorry it just (laughs) it just was a bit mad oh dear oh dear well I think for me this is a really relevant topic that we're talking about today because this is an area that I am becoming more and more um it's becoming harder for me to manage and create and get that balance I think it's getting worse for me actually um I had a week last week where um I was working a lot so I, I worked every night last week um and working full days as well like nine till I don't know five half five and then my little boy comes home do uh, bedtime bath time etc um, and then go back to my laptop and work for probably another two and a half hours, maybe. Um, and yeah, I got to a point where I, what day was it? Thursday, I literally hit a brick wall and I was kind of like the thought of turning my computer on, I was just like, I can't do it. Like, I just can't sit in front of that laptop again. So I forced myself to have a break, um, which sounds awful. Like I forced myself to have a break. But when you're in it and I had some deadlines that I needed to achieve. So that was driving some of it. I also only work part time. Yeah. And we've talked about part time working before. I think it's even harder when you work for yourself because 
it's harder to create that boundary because it's just you it's at the moment it is just me don't have a team around me yet and like that is really really difficult to then manage in terms of getting everything done um and then I kind of life is busy of course it is I've got you know I've got a young child as well um I then went into the weekend I was working it was father's day so I was doing the majority of the parenting and yeah I've you opened your kind of bit before saying like you don't know that the, your balances are kilter until you kind of feel it like it's gone it's done and I absolutely that resonated with me in terms of my experience last week week yeah. because I kind of hit this wall and I was like I know I have like borrowed too much energy from like this week now like I've, I've borrowed it taking it into last week to try and keep me going but now I'm gonna hit that point where yeah. I'm like I'm absolutely on my arse here like I'm yeah. done mentally um And I suppose the reason I'm sharing that is because it's important that we bring awareness to the fact that first off, I'm not necessarily proud of the fact that I did that. I don't, I'm not going to wear that as a badge of honor. I think it was the reality of my working situation. And as long as I don't do that all the time and I'm, and hopefully, you know, that won't continue, but also being honest and true that that is how I felt. I had got to a point where I was just like, I can't do anymore. Like I'm dumb. Um, there were no tears I will admit there were no tears but I was close I was close to being like ah how do I move forward like how do I get from here Um, and I think you know striving for that balance is absolutely something we all like have to you know absolutely be mindful of and is the perfect balance but the reality sometimes is is that in our situation we just can't find that balance or it's really challenging to find that because there's external factors at play like deadlines children something happens that you weren't expecting piece of work comes in that you need to focus in on whatever it is so I think that my work-life balance in particular in the last week or so has been very off kilter but hopefully that will kind of rebalance this week or so so for you what does a good work-life balance look like and why do you know that you can achieve it I suppose do you know when you're in it or when you've achieved it yeah, so I think it's interesting and I like, think, you know, your honesty there is really important because I think with this whole topic, I think what is important to stress is, is you're not going to get it right all the time. Yeah. And actually that's okay and actually totally normal because life is so unpredictable and things happen. And when you've got children and you're looking after other people, you're not in control of them. So things are going to happen to them that then you're responsible for supporting and fixing. And that is life. That's what happens. I think it's about being aware of it. Like you've described Susie, like, you know, you had a week last week that didn't work from a work life perspective and you borrowed too much from yourself and hit that wall it's about knowing that that did happen, I think, and recognising that for you, that's not okay. And it's not something you want to happen on a regular basis, which is what you've just said. So that you then know, okay, so if that's something I didn't enjoy particularly, how do I do things differently to do my best to avoid it going forwards? But I think it's giving ourselves a break to say, but it might not go to plan because life doesn't always go to plan. But I think being conscious of the fact of, we want to have some, you know, a way of working that does support us is one of the most important parts. And I think when I think of like good work-life balance, I think it's for me being able to get things done in a way that I'm content and happy with in any aspect of my life. I'm saying this could be work, this could be jobs at home it could be responsibilities I even have with my bloody dog like (laughs) if I'm getting things done in a way that I'm happy with and I actually have the time to acknowledge that I'm getting things done and that I'm happy with it so I'm actually being able to pat myself on the back a bit that says to me my work-life balance is actually all right because it's when I'm doing task after task after task and I'm running from this location to that location I'm organizing and sorting out that individual and that individual I'm catching up with that person and that person and I'm not having two minutes to even go look what I've done then I know something's wrong yeah because I'm just moving from one thing to the next without ever 
reflecting on the fact it's happened, being able to take away what was good about it, you know, from a work perspective, being able to acknowledge the things that didn't work and be able to change things. When I'm not able to do that, it's because there's no time and I'm trying to do too much. And that's usually then when I get the feeling of frazzled, exhausted and go, and it's too late. It's kind of like, oh, it's already yeah. happened now for like shit. Yeah, so definitely, I think that's when I know there's work-life balance. And in that ability of having that time to celebrate, I'm actually then being able to enjoy myself to some extent. Um, and and that actually, I suppose there's a big thing I'm not talking about, which is sleep. You know, if I'm getting sleep and it's good sleep and I'm not going to bed at like, you know, stupid o'clock in the morning, exhausted, and then grabbing five hours and then getting up and doing whatever again. Um, then again, I know that I'm in a good place because, you know, sleep is, as we've talked about a few times on this podcast, it is the foundation for our health and well-being. If we're, if we're getting sleep, we're refilling our energy tanks, we're able to give more for ourselves and for other people. Um, and the more you don't get that sleep, the worse it all becomes, I think. Yeah. So yeah. So I think those are the kind of key things for me. And what you know, in terms of assessing how good is my work life balance, it's having the time to acknowledge what I'm doing. It's having the time as part of that to celebrate it and enjoy myself and the sleep. I think they're the three things. Okay. Yeah. I think for me, <clears throat> what like definitely um, is missing when I know I've got the balance off kilter. So I think one is having the the space to be creative and to come out of the day to day and think about new ideas. Yeah. Because I'm a solopreneur and I run my own business. Um, not only do I run my own business, I'm a product as well. Mm. Um, and at the moment I kind of do everything. <laughs> um, actually spending when I have the time and capacity to come out of the day to day and look a bit more long term come up with new ideas, think about new things or might make changes here or I'm going to tweak that there. When I'm able to do that and have the opportunity to kind of give that time to to do that, that's when I know I've got a good work-life balance because it's allowing me to think more about the medium and long-term rather than just what's in front of me right now that I need to do. So that's one thing for me, definitely. And then the other thing, very simply, is that I can just watch reality TV for a bit. (laughs) Like I have some capacity in my day to be alone and actually just watch a bit of reality TV, whether that's below deck, I've talked about it before, obsessed, whether that's the Real Housewives, any genre of Real Housewives, obsessed, actually just a bit of escapism yeah. from that, like day to day. That is actually what um, I've helps me just kind of balance everything because life is busy and it's unsettled and there's lots going on I have health challenges as well physical health challenges I have to manage because I'm diabetic so when I also go a bit off kilter in terms of my balance my diabetes gets harder to manage Mm. I know that now sometimes I'm not great at acknowledging it but that is something I do now know so yeah I think for me when I know that everything's kind of like in a decent place in terms of that balance it's because those two things are there yeah um and I think it evolves like I think that used to be different realistically before I had a child in terms of what that looked like was different to what it probably is now like I used to hate being by myself like I think we talked about it before yes on, on the friendships episode. yeah yeah we did like, talk about it I used to hate <laughs> being by myself I always wanted to be like with people near people and I still am to an extent I am quite still a social butterfly but that craving that need for just like a bit of silence and alone time has become more since I had a child and since I started running my own business which is ironic really because I spend most of my days actually on my own but I'm doing stuff so I'm not kind of alone with my own like thoughts and thinking and you know what do I actually think about that or what you know what yeah what do I want to do with that or planning stuff or think just having that capacity to kind of stop and think anyone who's a working parent will know that that basically is impossible (laughs) um So, yeah, it's interesting how it evolves as well. And I think the point from that is that actually if your work-life balance has evolved or what that looks like has evolved, then that's also totally normal as well. Yeah, because things change. You yeah. change. As you've pointed out, you had quite one of the most significant changes there are, which is uh, having a child. And then who you are, what your priorities are, is all completely different. How your time is spent is different. 
So actually it's the small things like the small pleasures that give you respite and give you that opportunity to just do something for yourself completely selfishly, but enables you to switch off, which are really important. Absolutely. I cannot recommend an episode of Blow Deck more <laughs> to achieve that. Oh, anyway. Did you commission for this? I wish I did. <laughs> Do you know what my absolute dream would be to meet Captain Lee? Oh, you've um, talked about this before. To go on a That's super like... yacht. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to go on a super yacht. Get me a spot with you. I'll go on a super yacht. <laughs> I think we've got to do a few more episodes of this first. Uh, I think we have. <laughs> hey, CBBs, if you want to support us growing this podcast so that me and Suze can go on a super yacht, we'd really appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So why do you think we often struggle when trying to achieve this work-life balance? What gets in our way, do, we, do you think? God, do you know what? Well, the list on this, I think, is endless. And I started thinking of ideas around when, when we, I was preparing for the episode. And I was like, I, I, there's so many things. I mean, God, I think a big part around this is perception. And like what we tell ourselves we should be doing and how we should be living behaving all of it and I thought because I I mean I did bring this into myself and I thought you know what there is an element of not being able to say no and like the cultural environment that we live in both living and working I might add as well because we have pressures and expectations on us from everyone around us I think who are close to us from a work perspective and a personal life so your relationships and I and I think it's that like it being the norm to live like this which I think was true before Covid as I said I do think Covid caused a lot of us to reset but I think even now now Covid I mean it's not gone away but we're not living in those with those restrictions anymore. Yeah. I think some of that is trickling back. Um, you know, you can see it with the whole debate on whether or not people should be going back to the office or not. And therefore that expectation on people still like going back to the commute and coming away from their, uh, you know, homeworking environment and prioritizing being back in the rat race again. So I do think there's an external pressure on all of us and that perception, um, and as I said, not being able to say no. And, and then I do think we're not very good at saying what we want and setting our own boundaries. So all of us have it within our gift to say no and to push back. Uh, but we don't because actually that could be perceived as being harder than just carrying on as we are. Because that requires you to stop and think about, well, what do I want and how would I rather be living and what would I want to change? And if I'm going to change it, what am I actually going to do? And who do I need to tell to enable for me to make that happen? And what do I need to, you know, how do I need to behave differently to make that work for me? So that may involve saying no more often. It may be articulating those wants to people and making it clear what we will and won't accept, which requires a bit of assertion as well as that pre-thinking about getting that straight in our heads. And that does require effort. And I think for some of us, we'd much rather just stay on the hamster wheel because it's easier because we know it and we've got into a routine with that and there's a pattern there than doing the opposite. Mm. Forgetting actually the huge benefits that were on the other side of doing that. I mean, it's I've done it. It's quite empowering to do it. You feel powerful when you've done it because you've like well, I've put out there what I want and I've got it. And now the way I'm living is much better for me. But that does require, yeah, it requires time to stop to do it, to think about it. It requires a level of courage in some ways, if it's not something that comes natural to you, to be that assertive. And there's effort in that in terms of setting up those kind of conversations, but, you know, and time. So as I said, most people, I think, just go, oh, no, I can't bother with that. I'd rather just carry on doing what I'm doing, even though that's exhausting. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I think for me, I think one of the reasons why like, I either struggle with it, but also I think people I work with sometimes or I coach one-to-one struggle with it as well is this is basically down to one word. And that word is perfectionism. And I definitely do this. So I am a perfectionist 
Um, I want to do a great job with everything that I do. Mm. I wouldn't say it necessarily um, stops me from starting. So I don't kind of like lose time like that. But once I start, but once I'm in it, I then go into this endless cycle of like tweaking and making that better. And I'm not, I've got better actually, but I'm still not great at just being like, this is done. This is good enough. I'm going to walk away now. And I think going back to my experience of last week, I think that's probably what was fueling some of my poor work-life balance last week was because I wanted to do a great job because if I do a great job, um, people will want to work with me again. So that's brilliant. But also that's really important to me that I do a great job in everything that I do um, because I'm very dedicated to what I spend my time on and what and what I do and what I offer so that's kind of important to me Mm. then that's fueling my perfectionism and so then I'm just like endlessly in the cycle of like tweaking this doing this oh actually that doesn't work for me I'm going to tell you that Uh, like probably the end result is no is probably not any massively different so probably where I started but it really impacted my well-being and my work-life balance last week And, and I think that's from what I understand from conversations with other people, I think that comes into play for a lot of us. Yeah. Is that we have this ideal of this perfect piece of work, this perfect project, this perfect report, this perfect conversation we're going to have with our colleague, this perfect relationship, even to parenting as well, like our per- being a, the perfect parent, whatever yeah. that looks like. And and our kind of we have we're going off like off piece here, but like even like our society breeds all that. You just have to look at social media, yeah, to see all these. You know, we've talked about it quite a lot this season about the influencers, <laughs> you yeah. know, in their perfect images, etc. So, for you know, I definitely think in my experience that's one of the reasons why I have struggled sometimes to maintain it is because my perfectionism really comes into play and probably into play too much. Yeah, it's so interesting. So Brené Brown talks about perfectionism Brené Brown's the famous American um lecturer and psychologist and who's really famous I'm sure many people know who she is but she talks about perfectionism and and how it's an external reference for us that actually perfectionism is about pleasing other people and actually it was the one thing I didn't say um in that long list of things I said about what stops us from achieving work by life balance but it was on my list sitting at the bottom which is please everyone Actually, I think that's what stops us often from achieving work-life balance because we just want to get things right for everybody. Yeah. Um, and, but I think we miss the fact that that then often, like we're missing the one person who's most important in all of that to please, which is ourselves. Yeah. Um, and Brené Brown talks about healthy striving instead of, like aiming for healthy striving instead of perfectionism because healthy striving is much more about us and about doing things for ourselves and embracing the learning journey that we're on and the the benefits of that um, rather than going for perfectionism. Because I've seen it in individuals before that I've coached. It's interesting, you you mentioned it, where they're holding themselves back actually so much so because of the obsession with perfectionism. It's actually becoming debilitating and, and stopping them from doing things. I know you mentioned it doesn't stop you um, but it may just cause you to not know when to stop. Stop. Um, yeah, yeah. Once you've started. Whereas I've seen it in people where actually they can't even start because that uh, perfectionism has actually started to be a fear of even doing it. Um, and I know I've I've had that at times. I mean, one of my mantras used to be, if I can't do it well, I'm not going to bother at all, which I really bought into actually and I did for a long time until I learned a bit more about like growth mindset and fixed mindsets with you know Dr Carol Dweck's work and then read about this with Brené I was like I've had that wrong for my whole life it's, it shouldn't be if I can't do it brilliantly don't do it at all because that stops me from trying loads of stuff it's really interesting yeah I think we could do a whole episode topic on perfection we could actually maybe that's something we should do maybe we'll take that into season six Six. yeah good idea in the autumn um yeah let us know your thoughts CBB as if that would be helpful so on the basis of being helpful what suggestions do you have that might help our CBBs in striking a better balance between work and their personal life I think the first thing is stop so I think it's carving out time to just stop, pause, 
And I think, especially if you're like Susie and I, where we've talked about this acknowledgement that we realise we've not got the balance right, too late usually, it's after the event. I think that's probably true for many of us. Yeah. Um, I think that's okay because at least you are having the awareness and you're realising, because I think it's at that point you stop. But I think it's getting into the habit of making time in your week always. And I've talked about this before and other things, you know, to support other topics. But I think it's so helpful in so many ways for so many different things, which is make time in your diary every week, even if it's just 30 minutes to just have space that's called stop or thinking time. Because I think once you start doing that and you literally physically put it in your diary, it requires you to protect it, by the way. So there's discipline here. I think you actually then start getting into a habit of checking in with yourself every week and going, what is going on? Like, How am I? What have I achieved this week? What have I got done? Um, what do I want to do next? I, I think that's what will start enabling you to have the space to think, to stop, to check in, to see whether you've got the balance right. Um, so that is my first thing. And I think it's then looking at, you know, what are you prioritizing? Um, because I do think we can get into a very like bad habit of saying that everything's top priority and that's just never true. And that's often what throws the work-life balance out because you're just trying to do everything all at the same time because you're not um, categorizing anything as being top priority medium priority and I think you have to put yourself into those um lists as well so I know for example exercising getting outside especially at this time of year although I do that in inverted commas because the weather's not great everywhere in the UK regardless (laughs) of weather I I think um prioritizing myself in the list of to do around getting outside walking the dog so like I walked the dog before this podcast which I have to admit did put me under pressure to start on time I didn't start on time but luckily (laughs) Susie is a very forgiving colleague and didn't get too upset with me for being late um but it was important for me to do that because I knew I would be better for it and I would be better on this podcast and I'd feel better because I got outside and I'd done something for me and the dog I like that really is really important to me today. And, and I've gotten a really good habit over the last couple of weeks of regularly getting out quite early and walking. So that's what I mean about, I think you've got to prioritize yourself amongst your list of to-dos. I've, that helps you get some of that balance, I think. Um, even if it's just one thing, like it doesn't have to be loads of stuff, but like just give yourself one thing that's for you, I think on a daily basis, um, even if it is just half an hour. I mean, that's all that that walk was this morning. It was only 30 Whoa. minutes. Even if it is an episode of Below Deck, I mean, they don't come out daily. That would be amazing. But even if it is just an episode of your favorite TV program, yeah, <laughs> just let yourself you know, have yeah, minutes. like come on, eat your can, lunch in the all, garden. Yeah, or, like we can all do that. And then I think you know. the other tip for me is about boundaries. I do think none of us are particularly good at knowing, like, off the top of our heads. So it takes practice. You have to think about these things, like what does good look like for us? And like, what are we willing to accept? And what are we not? Like, what's too far? And that can be things like, what goes too far is when, for me, I know, um, my whole weekend is booked up and I've given nothing at the weekend to just being at home, even if it's only half a day, but being at home, being with the dog, going outside, like getting my washing done, sounds really mundane, but things like that make my brain get in order. But like, I've gone too far when things like that are not scheduled properly and I've got better at going those have to be in my day or my weekend or whatever and so when something else comes in I know I can say well do I want to do this or not rather than just go yeah yeah yeah, I'll do that because do you know what I mean I think I think you have to think about like what is what do you want to do what do you not want to do like what's not okay similar like like working times like Susie you said you worked every night last week um I know that's not what you would like to do. And I'm sure like going forward as a, as weeks go, you don't want to copy that. But like you might be happy to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights. I don't know. I'm putting words in your mouth. But you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, know, it's knowing what's okay for you. Yeah. And, and again, because everybody is different. Because yeah. I actually like am better working in the evening. I've got more energy working in the evening than I probably do in the morning, actually. Yeah. Like yeah. I don't normally start work till about half nine just because... 
I'm not so good in the morning. Yeah. It takes me a while to kind of warm up and get into things. Um, but you're right. That's not to say I want to work every evening because then my capacity is just fully given yeah. to work in that sense. Um, but no, I love that. Some of those tips about actually what does what does good look like for you in terms of that work-life balance? Because the first step is about awareness. Yeah. If you are aware of what that looks like, you'll then be able to catch it if you are in that moment and the balance is is tipping and it's and it's not in place you'll know that that balance is tipping so you'll be able to catch it and do something about it to helpfully allow you not to get to that place where you're exhausted you're burnt out but you know that's not no good for anyone and Mm -hmm. and certainly um not a healthy place to be so yeah no I, I love that so it is now time for bullshit bingo This is where we call out phrases which get commonly used in the workplace, which make us cringe. Our bullshit bingo for today's episode came from our CBB community, and it is, we need to unpack this. So, Suze, what do you think of this one? I mean, can I just say the some of the bullshit bingos for this season from our CBBs, they've upped the game. Like, there's some great ones in this season so far and this is another classic we need to unpack this immediately I'm thinking about the fact I need to unpack shopping bags I don't know why I'm thinking I was right I need to put that there and the fact that I need to do a food shop so my brain's gone gone into a different place 100% we need to unpack this I've heard this you I've heard this loads, but I actually think I've used this as well have you yeah I'm sure I have like I don't oh, think I've not used this I don't think this is that bad I don't think as a bullshit bingo I don't think Do this is that cringy. no I don't think this, this is that weird I think this oh is I think this is really weird oh no I think this is quite normal I would this is like for me the whole like being on a journey thing because I hear journey so much in coaching I've just kind of got quite accepted of except ting of the word journey and like we're on a journey and you know some of my favorite people talk about journeys like Brené and everyone else um but yeah we need to unpack this I don't think that's that bad I don't I think I've heard this and I think I've oh it. controversial. controversial so I, yeah I I don't really think this is a bullshit video. <laughs> but then I say all the stuff that I say isn't really bullshit so that's me just like favoring myself well I would definitely say this is a bullshit bingo I <laughs> I think it's just the word unpack. Immediately, I just think about shopping, as I've mentioned. So I think it's just that instead, particular though? word. What would you say instead? Like, well, well, let's just get into the detail. I'd be like, let's unpick it, maybe? Yeah, see, so unpick, know. I think unpick is a more common one, I think, than unpack. Don't you think? Unpick. Yeah, maybe. I've definitely, I think I've used unpick as well. Unpick, maybe I've unpack. used unpick. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Well, if you have got any bullshit bingos, attrition or not, <laughs> then you need the term, to send that's them. Not bullshit. <laughs> you need I'm to send Google them it. into us. Uh, you can do that in three ways. You can uh, send us a message on Instagram on our page at the Coaching Cast. You can email us at hello at thecoachingcast.co.uk, or you can send us a message via our website, thecoachingcast.co.uk. We love hearing from them and want to feature as many of them as possible in future episodes so please send them in I think I've talked absolute nonsense I think I used the word attrition in the wrong context I've just googled it and doesn't mean at all what I thought oh Oh, god (laughs) we are coming to the end of today's episode where we have discussed work-life balance our tips and recommendations from today's episode are number one stop (laughs) stop what you're doing carve out some time to assess your work-life balance pause and perhaps just take stock of things and assess where you are pragmatically in order to do that you need to put some time aside dedicated to doing it number two put some time in your diary just for you on a weekly basis you can use that time however you want that can be 10 minutes 20 minutes an hour whatever works for you but actually you need to prioritize yourself as well so make sure you do that number three what are you prioritizing at the moment so have a think about actually where are you spending your time what are you prioritizing in your day-to-day and that can be work and personal life as well and make sure you think about how you're prioritizing yourself as well within that 
And then finally, our top tip number four, have a think about what does a good work-life balance look like for you? Because we are all different. So Lisa and I have reflected upon what our individual uh, work-life balances might look like. As I mentioned for the final time, for me, that's watching a lot of Below Deck, but that might not be the case for you. So have a think about what does that look like for you? So you are clear and then you'll know when you're not maintaining that and you can catch it and do something about it. Here are also some self-coaching questions to help you with your work-life balance. So you can ask yourself these, write the, you can write the answers down on a piece of paper or you can just uh, think about them internally. So number one, how would you rate your work-life balance on a scale of one to five? One being non-existent, five being I've nailed it. Number two, at the moment, how is your work-life balance impacting your well-being? And number three, what action could you take that would have an immediate positive impact on your work-life balance? Don't worry if you can't remember all of these hints, tips and self-coaching questions. We will put them on our Instagram page at The Coaching Cast following this episode going out on Tuesday. We really hope you enjoyed today and have some new ideas to take away and try for yourselves. If you have any questions, thoughts or feedback, we would love to hear from you. You can contact us in three ways. On email at hello at thecoachingcast.co.uk on Instagram at The Coaching Cast. And finally, you can contact us through our website at thecoachingcast.co.uk. Your support means more than you will ever know. So if you like what you've heard today and any other episodes and would like to help us grow this podcast, please do us a favor. Leave us a review on the Apple Podcast app. You have no idea how important these are. Hit subscribe wherever you listen and give us a follow on Instagram at The Coaching Cast. Don't forget, you can also watch each episode on our YouTube channel by searching The Coaching Cast. So next week's episode is a really, really special one. It is our 50th podcast episode, a milestone for us and The Coaching Cast. So we are celebrating In this episode, we will be joined by some very special listeners, some very special CBBs. We will be discussing together with them what confidence in the workplace looks like for females, as well as asking our CBBs for their fave bullshit bingo. So we're going to have a bit of a bullshit bingo bonanza in next week's episode. It's going to be really fun and memorable. So please, please be sure to tune in next week and listen to us. The 50th episode plans don't stop there, though. We are also hosting a charity fundraising event on Wednesday, the 6th of July on Zoom. You can join us for a jam-packed, fun-filled event where we'll be talking all about how you can thrive at work. More details to come, but we will definitely be playing actual bullshit bingo as well. Bullshit bingo theme going on in these 50th celebrations, that's (laughs) for sure. (laughs) So if you would like to join us as well as support our chosen charity, which is Mind, head to our website, thecoachingcast.co.uk, where you can now register your interest to join our 50th celebration event on Wednesday, the 6th of July at 7pm on Zoom. We both love music and use it to motivate and energise us. So we like to finish each episode with our personal song recommendation giving you positivity and energy as you launch into your next meeting. It's my choice this week, and I have chosen Came Here for Love by Ella Eyre and Sigala. It is an absolute banger. Summary tune. It is, to match Lisa's Costa del Sol vibes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Sorry, everyone in Cheshire and (laughs) anyone else who's north. Thanks so much for listening, CBBs. Have a great week. And remember, you've got this. <laughs>